Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And we're going to be talking about kefir benefits for your heart. And it was maybe a couple of weeks ago that I had a really sweet friend whose husband died at a young age of a heart attack. And nobody really saw this coming. I think he'd had some heart problems when he was younger. And um, it just was so unexpected, though. It can be really devastating to families to feel the hurt or loss of someone that they love. And your heart is certainly one of the most important organs in your body. And since heart disease is the biggest killer in the United States, it's really, really important that you take care of your heart. But just how do you do this? And is there a connection between the gut and the heart that can give you clues on how to take care of your heart? You hear all of the advice about exercising and eating certain foods and eating right, but um, so much of this can support your heart health. But uh, what's certainly important is there's more to the equation that because everybody has a different idea about what is healthy. And one of the new things that's been researching more and more is that there are new discoveries in the connection between bacteria and the heart and the overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestines called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. When the wrong type of bacteria leaks through the intestinal lining and into the bloodstream, it can lead to widespread inflammation. And inflammation affects the whole body, but it especially affects the heart. And most people are saying, and most cardiologists, I've seen not most cardiologists, but many of the cardiologists who have um, done a lot of research and have seen more you know, heart disease than anybody have discovered that inflammation is one of the things that is causing all the problems in the heart. And a 2018 study published in the journal Digestive Disease and Science found that patients with SIBO had an 80% higher chance of having heart disease. And they also had an increased number of coronary arteries that were affected. And the gut-heart connection is becoming so important that cardiologists will be sending their patients to see a gastroenterologist to test for bacteria that may be migrating into the wrong places and vice versa. And some researchers believe that this reality is even closer than we think. So 47% of all Americans have at least one primary risk for heart disease. One of those things being either high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or if they smoke, um, usually any of those things give you a a better chance of having this heart disease and other problems in the body as well. But I have seen a lot of people have SIBO or IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome in the last five years. It just seems to be an explosion. And um, I've been working really hard trying to find an answer for these people because I've seen so much of this come really out of nowhere. And it's growing so fast that now they're saying that a quarter of the population has SIBO. And people that, you know, patients that have irritable bowel syndrome have a 78% rate of SIBO. And researchers are finding that these individuals with these type of gastrointestinal problems have a higher risk of developing heart disease. And I've written extensively about SIBO and IBS. I have two separate articles on that, and I'll link those descriptions for you. But I have a lot of information about how to help these situations, what causes these situations, because so many times whenever we have any kind of disease, um, they want to treat the disease, but they don't want to know what caused it. And And honestly, trying to find out what caused the disease is so helpful so that it won't reoccur. And um, it is my personal belief that a lot of the SIBOs that I've seen happen um, have been from taking probiotic supplements because they open up in the wrong places in the body and cause all kinds of problems because the body wasn't really meant to take probiotics in supplement form. They don't work very well. They get killed off in the stomach acids, but they often can open up places they don't belong. And this, you know, a lot of people are taking antibiotics and so then they take probiotics on top of that. Probiotic foods are a much better way to deliver probiotics to the body. It's the body's preferred method. It has a protective halo around the food that speaks to the parts of the body where it belongs. And it doesn't cause all of these other problems that we're seeing an explosion in. So kefir is a very powerful food. 
that has, it's my first culture food I ever had. And it has 50 good bacteria and good yeast. It's a fermented drink. And more and more studies are coming out showing the power of my absolute favorite cultured food. Had it every day for 20 years. Um, I've been, you know, well, actually, maybe 11. I've been having it since 2001. And I have witnessed firsthand the effects. Um, the main reason I kept drinking kefir in the beginning was because it lowered my blood pressure so much. Um, it shocked me how much it did that. Um, it works on an enzyme in the stomach that works like an ACE inhibitor drug in, in one out of three people. And it works so effectively that that was the main reason I kept drinking it. And a new study in 2021 in the Journal of Pharma Nutrition, they published a study conducted by a pharmaceutical and physiological research at the University of Via Vela and Federal University of Espirito Santo. And both of these are in Brazil on the effects of consuming kefir and their kefir was made with kefir grains for 12 weeks. They did this study and they examined data from 48 patients who had been diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, which often simultaneously occurs. Um, this occurs when people have problems with their heart um, and it increases a, a risk of um, heart disease. And it also many of the times it includes high cholesterol, high blood sugar, excess fat around the middle high blood pressure, and other ailments. And so they divided these 48 participants into two groups for 12 weeks. And one group drank milk kefir daily with, that was made with kefir grains, while the control group received a placebo drink. And neither one of the groups knew what the other was drinking or what they were drinking. Now, the results was pretty dramatic. The participants who drank kefir saw decreased blood pressure, lower, lower fasting blood sugar, decreased levels of bad cholesterol, and for female participants, increased good cholesterol. Um, the study authors wrote, kefir also reduced the risk of a cardiovascular event for the next 10 years based on this study, reducing the LDLs and the risk of developing cardiovascular events for the next 10 years. Um, that's if they kept drinking kefir. The risk of cardiovascular events for the next 10 years was calculated through the Farmington score method. And guys, I saw this happen to me in the very beginning in 2001. It lowered my blood sugar because I had become type 2 diabetic. It got, um, lowered my blood pressure. I lost weight. Um, all of those things happened to me. That was the main reason I kept drinking kefir. I also really, really liked it. Um, and the other reason I kept drinking was because of the way that it made me feel. I had a sense of well-being that I had not had ever in my life. It just made me feel so good that I couldn't stop drinking it because I didn't want to lose those benefits. Um, and I especially didn't want to go on a bunch of medications and things that, you know, that are required when you have all of those problems in your life. And it has, I, from that day to this, I've never had to take any kind of medication for anything. And uh, I credit Kiefer with doing that. Now, one of the reasons they did this study was because there was another study done on kefir, but this one was done at the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry on rats. And they made they fed kefir to these rats and concluded that the kefir helped to strengthen their heart blood pumping action. It lowered their blood pressure, reduced enlargement of the heart muscle, and improved handling of calcium handling proteins, important mediators of cardiac contractional function. And because that was so effective, that's why they did the other study on humans. And it actually had the same effect on the humans that it did on the rodents. So it's really, it's, you know, I've been noticing the effects. I mean, there's a lot of centurions who live to 100, you know, that drink kefir, that consume these types of foods on a daily basis. And um, it's, it's something that I know has kept me young. And I just don't, I don't just have kefir. I have other cultured food too. But I would say, hands down, kefir is the one I have the most consistently of all the cultured foods. Although I do have the others too. But I think kefir makes the biggest impact on my health, on my body, on my skin, on my aging, on the sense of well-being, um, on fighting any kind of illness or pathogenic things in my life. All of that is a very normal function of our lives, um, keeping us healthy. And that goes for me and my family. We just, we just plain and simple don't go to the doctor because we don't 
need it. We don't go get sick like that. We don't, unless, you know, somebody's broke a bone or something, we just don't go. We don't need it. And uh, that alone in itself is an extraordinary thing that we've been doing for the last 20 years, 21. And it's so normal to me that it, it kind of shocks me when I see people, you know, going to the doctors, getting medications and doing it. And not that that's bad, but I just, we just don't need it. And it, it has really set us free in so many ways. And so it's so normal to us that I'm surprised when everybody else doesn't do it. And it's just food, guys. It's not drugs. It's not even supplements. It's mostly just cultured foods and eating healthy. And it has just changed. It's changed our whole lives. And it's been that way for a long time. Now, when you're trying to get healthy, one of the most important things you can do is to heal and seal your gut. And you might not have heard about it before, but Acromantia municipalia is really important bacteria that resides in your gut. It was discovered in 2004, and this friendly, really good bacteria makes up 1% to 4% of your total gut microbes. It's really important. It's what its main function is to help you maintain your gut lining, and it has so many health benefits. So... Your gut lining is what protects you from the outside world. And when it's damaged, you can get leaky gut syndrome, which is linked to IBS, anxiety, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. It's all linked to that. And the municipalia part of that name comes from the acromantus love of mucus. And it loves to eat the slimy layer of mucus that coats your intestinal walls. This mucus layer is very, very important for gut health, and it's very important for the health of your whole body. And while this bacteria munches on the mucus, Acromantia produces nutrients that feed our good gut bacteria, and it keeps it from depleting the, the lining on our gut. And, um, you know, people would think that that would, it, well, it's eating on the gut lining that it would deplete it, but it actually does the opposite. It strengthens it. It encourages the cells to become stronger and make a tough barrier which is super important. And feeding acromantia is really easy, um, but most people don't know how to do it. And one of the foods that acromantia loves the most of all the foods is apples and apple peels. The apple peels are one of its favorite foods, and apples contain over 50% pectin, which is a potent prebiotic. And when acromantia has that, it grows like crazy. So when you eat apples, and especially the peels, um, it just it's just wonderful for the acromantia to grow like crazy. I love apple peel powder in my kefir smoothies. I put it in there every morning. Um, I just, I love, I get a little scoop. I started buying apple peel powder, and I started selling it because I think it's so important. And you could do this by getting apples too, guys. You don't have to buy apple peel powder. I just did it to make sure I got it. And I actually kind of like the flavor in my smoothie. Now, there are other foods that feed acromantia too. It likes blueberries. It likes elderberries. It likes Jerusalem artichokes. And guys, if you haven't tried Jerusalem artichokes, I always heard they were good for you. But when I started eating them, they are so good. They're also called choke, choke berries, I think. And they have massive amounts of prebiotic fibers in them. And acromantia loves them. And they have, they have this wonderful taste. It kind of is like a, how do I explain it? It's kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's so good. And I had never had them before. They have a, a bright taste to them. And I really like them. Kind of like golden beets. That's something they taste like. Um, asparagus feed acromantia, cherries, strawberries, plums, raspberries, and apple peel powders, and apples, and especially the peels of apples. Um, FOS, which is fruto oleosaccharide, um, has a really good result in feeding and growing acromancy in a laboratory. They tested it. And you can find FOS in, I have a product called Prebio Plus, which is a, just a prebiotic, but you can also get it in other things. It's in actually all of these berries and Jerusalem artichokes, asparagus. It's in that. That's where they're getting it from. And it's basically a prebiotic. And acromancy loves it. And it feeds off of it and makes your gut lining strong because you want your gut lining strong or you're going to have problems. Because if your gut lining is leaking, you're leaking stuff into your bloodstream. You're getting inflammation throughout the body. It's a mess. And if you don't seal and heal that gut, then you're not going to heal very well. That's the number one thing you can do. And guys, it's as simple as eating apples and apple peels and uh, feeding your body what it, it loves. You know, 
what's the old saying? An apple peel a day keeps the do- or apple a day keeps the doctor away. I put peel in there because I'm so used to it. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's because it kept your gut lining attack and they just didn't know that's what it was doing. But apples are powerful foods. They are loaded with pectin, which is so good for you. So good. It's a, it's a really good prebiotic. And um, I think it, it works quite effectively to help feed acromancia and keep that gut lining sealed and keeping you safe from all the outside world of pathogens that can get in there and wreak destruction. Now, Okay, so let me tell you this little story. So way back in when I first started Cultured Foods, my daughter had IBS. She had irritable bowel syndrome. And her stomach, she had a, she started getting food allergies. She'd never had food allergies. And suddenly she had food allergies out the wazoo, and every day she was getting more. And I didn't know what was wrong with her, but she had taken a lot of antibiotics. She had done a very, very, very low-carb di- diet, And she basically starved her microbes because she wasn't eating a lot of fiber to feed her microbes. And she had taken a lot of antibiotics and she just had terrible irritable bowel syndrome and food allergies. I started giving her a cultured food at every meal and she stopped her diet, her strict diet. And um, you got to have a lot of vegetables if you're doing lower carb. Lower carb is not bad as long as you're having a lot of vegetables and fiber. And there's lots to choose from, um, you know, in the vegetable kingdom. So she started having a culture food every meal, and she had a fermented drink like uh, kombucha, bika vas, coconut water kefir at every every lunch and dinner. She did that. And uh, within, and actually she had, I mean, she had cultured vegetables, she had kefir every day, and her food allergies went away because I believe one of the main reasons you get food allergies is because you're missing gut bacteria. It's not the food that's causing the allergies. It's that you're missing the essential bacteria in your gut. And this causes food allergies. And it's not just me saying this. There's a lot of research to support this. And they're finding it everywhere. They're studying it all over the world. And all these people are discovering that the food allergies are caused by missing gut bacteria. Restore that missing, missing gut bacteria. And the food allergies go away. Uh, bacteria like Bifido, Colostria, that, and it has like 100 species in it. All of those... Um, missing gut bacteria will um, cause you to have food allergies. And, you know, in this day and age when we've had so many kids and people taking antibiotics, um, and then they replenish it with supplements, which don't work very well, and then they get SIBO, um, I think they can help sometimes. I do. I'm not completely against them, but you just never know where they're going to open up. So anyway, long story short, we healed her IBS and it was, I would say her gut lining healed her gut. She heard every time she ate food and within a month that stopped maybe three weeks within two months, she was able to add some foods that she hadn't had before. And within a year, she completely could eat anything she wanted and all of her symptoms were gone. And, um, I believe her gut lining was really damaged because of what she'd been doing because if the microbes don't have anything to eat, guys, they can eat the gut lining. So that's one of the most important things is to keep that thing sealed. And one of the best ways to do that is to give it apples and prebiotics and all manner of prebiotic foods, vegetables, fruits. They all have what your microbes need. And the fiber is not for you. It's for your microbes. And then they create all of these properties. They decrease inflammation and throughout the body. They allow... Um, digestion to occur so much easier. You're not going to struggle to digest your food. They do, well, it's, this is a whole other podcast. It's just, it's why I do all of the podcasts that I do to explain to you what your trillions of microbes do in your body. And I believe that it's really important to understand the bacteria that's in your gut. And I think acromancy was put in you for a very important reason. It is governing your gut lining. It is taking care of you, keeping it intact, keeping it sealed from outside forces that could harm you. And kefir, well, everybody needs to keep kefir. That's just my personal opinion. I call it the love of my life. It changed everything in my life. Um, It showed me the inner workings of the trillions of microbes. It lowered my blood pressure. It lowered my blood sugar. It gave me a sense of wellness. It changed the way I felt. It gave me a sense of joy. And when I drank it, mighty forces came to my behalf and worked inside of me to create the wellness that I so, so wanted and craved. 
It produces 19 anti-inflammatory markers that protect my heart, that lower my blood pressure, that keep my arteries clear, and it feeds my microbiome. And it just, it has just changed everything for me. And that's why I've continued to do it. You know, I heard somebody say today, um, why don't you eat these foods? Why don't you, I mean, there's certain things we do every day, like why do some people drink coffee every day? You, you love it. That's why you do it, right? Or, you know, why do you have all these little things in your life that you do, certain foods that you eat that you have all the time? Because you love it. Well, I love kefir, so I can't stop doing it because it's helped me so much, not just physically, but I love the flavors. That's why I have gazillions of recipes on there. I love making it. Now, I, now I'm making kefir and, and yogurt together because it makes this smooth, creamy uh, smoothie bowl that I love every morning. I just, you couldn't get me to stop doing it because I've done it for, I do it for so long and because I love it. I can't, I can't stop. And I love what it does for me, but I also love the flavor of it too. And it's the fast and quickest breakfast you can ever make because it just takes less than a few minutes to make. Um, and it's just really a food. It's not a drug and it's been consumed for thousands of years. And the thing I love about it is kefir found its way to me when I really, really needed it. And I was really hurting and really upset, but never in a million years did I think the answer to my prayers was in the form of a fermented food filled with billions of microbes. That was just, that was the surprise of my life. But it changed everything. And it can change you too. And kefir is one of the easiest cultured foods to make. It takes less than five minutes. And in 24 hours, you have a jug of kefir that will last many, many months in your fridge. I highly recommend it for your gut lining, for your heart, for your arteries, for your cholesterol, for your blood pressure, and for your taste buds, and for your mind, because it helps you feel so good. Kefir is an amazing fermented food. It has the most probiotics of all the cultured foods, and it is, it is a thing that made me well, guys, and it continues to do so. It's amazing. So I hope you'll give it a try. It's super easy to make. We got two ways to make it. You can use kefir grains, um, but then you got to take care of your kefir grains and make it on a regular basis. Or you can use easy kefir, which is made from kefir grains. You won't get grains, but you'll get flash frozen kefir grains that will make you gallons of kefir. We do it all the time. It's fantastic. You know, I had a lady write me this morning and I had never heard of this one. This is a new one. She said she's been hemorrhaging for three years. And now she is drinking kefir and it's stopped. She's been getting iron infusions. And for some reason it stopped um, for the last three, four weeks since she started having kefir. It is a tremendous food, guys. And we don't understand the workings of our body or what's happening on the inside. I mean, I don't know all the things it's doing. I have no idea. I have learned a lot. I've got several hundred articles, uh, health articles on it, but... I didn't know it could do that. I didn't know that. And I'm always learning something new. You know, the, you know, all the things that are going on inside of us, including our, our heart that pumps the blood and to all the arteries and keeps us moving through, uh, you know, throughout our days, you know, who's doing all that? You know what I'm saying? Our, our precious heart is doing that. And, um, there is, we are beautifully and wonderfully made. And I want you to remember that. And I want you to do everything in your power to make this body you live in, this vessel that you live in, the best body it can be. And I'll tell you right now, it loves kefir. And it, it, it changes everything. If it lowers 19 inflammatory markers, and that was just done in a Stanford study, they couldn't believe it when they saw it. But I believe it because my life changed dramatically when I started having it. A cup of kefir a day, that's all I did. That's all I do. And sometimes I have more. I take that back. Sometimes I have more, but for the most part, it's a cup of kefir a day. It changed everything. And I hope it will do that for you. Thanks, guys, for listening. You have a great week. Go check out kefir. You can make it non-dairy. You can make it dairy. There's all different ways to do it. I think I've got 16 different non-dairy recipes, too. I'll put that in the link description below. Um, and just get started. See what happens. See, your life is your best teacher. And your body is too. So have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time.